This evening around the uh, Big East and also around the top 20, even if PC had won this game, you would not hasten to call it an upset because Providence always plays very tough on this floor. Let's check what else has been happening tonight. Temple had a very tough game throughout the entire evening with a win over jo uh, George Washington 73-77. Also, Illinois is trailing at home by 10 late now. Let's update you. I do believe Michigan State holds a lead in this game at 63-53. And also Akron and Pitt, that game now, a two-point lead for the Zips. That is into the second half. Navy, a very comfortable win tonight, 91-66. And Duke, also a very comfortable win tonight as well. Iowa has a comfortable lead on Wisconsin. And also DePaul with a comfortable lead on Furman to round out what's been happening tonight so far in the top 20. So that's a quick picture of where we have been so far tonight in the top 20. And again, to update you, we will be sending you right now to Mackey Arena. Big Monday, number six, Purdue, taking on the Wolverines. Now, let's send it to Dick Vitale and Mike Patrick in West Lafayette. Bob Lee, thank you very much. We are indeed here in Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana, where they are sold out for the season. And Dick, quickly, let's take a look at the matchups for these clubs. Purdue comes in 9-1, and one, Michigan 8-4. and four. Well, Mike, we look at a matchup right here where it's the perimeter game of Michigan versus the interior and perimeter game of Purdue, which has a balanced lineup. Michigan's front court does not have the kind of talent and the kind of strength to play with the McCants and with the Mitchells and with Doug Lee across the front. Bill Frieder in his seventh season has won back-to-back -back Big Ten titles for the Wolverines. And Gene Cady has his Boilermakers at 9-1 and one on the year and ranked sixth by the Associated Press. Before they were upset a week ago, or at least beaten a week ago, they were as high as second in the polls. He feels they haven't played against the tough competition to prepare them for the kind of tenacity they're going to see now in the Big Ten. McCants against Hughes. Jumping center, and it's Michigan's basketball to start with. Man -man Grant and Thompson in the backcourt. Hands down. Hey, hands down. Get it inside for the jumper by Glenn Rice, and the sophomore out of Flint, Michigan, has the first two. He's a really a dandy, Mike. He posts up real well. He's an outstanding wing jump shooter, and he can rebound. He's the guy that they have to count on getting rebounding from. Have to watch everybody in the white uniforms because Purdue has that balanced scoring attack. Here's the jumper inside. No good by McCants, but McCants will get the loose ball. But the man really to keep an eye on is number 21, Everett Stevens. He's averaging almost seven assists a game. Doug Lee, good outside shooting forward. He's one of my old Kurt Rambis kind of players. He's a scrapper, a hustler, a transfer from out of Texas A&M, and he has great range as a shooter, but an excellent penetration move by Stevens. He was shooting less than 30% on three-pointers, but he drilled that one. Joubert, great pass underneath, but through the hands of guard Thompson. Antoine Joubert has really been maligned as a player, Mike. Came in with such a reputation as we look at Mr. Intensity, Gene Cady. But the kid was a big-time high school scorer, and he had so much publicity that it really was difficult for him to live up to that kind of notoriety when he started his collegiate career at Michigan. Remember at the start of last season when they played against Georgia Tech, that great early season ball game? He played such a brilliant game in that one. There was such a buildup over that game. Both teams preseason were number one and number right. two up in Springfield. And the game really didn't materialize into an outstanding game, but he did play well. Stevens bringing the ball up against pressure. Lewis has been in somewhat of a shooting slump. This is Mitchell, and Mitchell makes it a 5-2 ball game. Versatility is really his trademark. He can go inside and outside. The drive produces nothing as Grant tried to get inside. Ahead of the pack is Lewis. Lost it, got it back, but Michigan will control. Jobert leads the break. Three-pointer. Who benefits from run and gun here? It definitely is in Purdue's favor. Michigan's not a good team in defensive transition. This kind of tempo favors Purdue. A lot of body contact, and the foul is going to go on Gary Grant. That's his first. Although Purdue did have trouble with an up-tempo game against North Carolina in their only loss. They had trouble in that game because Everett Stevens got in foul trouble. Mike, if there's one player that's irreplaceable on that Purdue team, it's the point guard. He's the catalyst who makes him go, Everett Stevens. He is number 21 and has the basketball. A junior out of Evanston, Illinois. He is cat quick, being guarded by Grant. Come on, please. Michigan playing man-to-man -man defense. I'll look for them to change defensively as the game progresses. 
Give it inside to McCants. Fires up an air ball. And the rebounder, Rice, who is averaging almost nine and a half rebounds a game. Thompson, head of the pack, pulls it up instead. The jumper to Rice. And the rebound to Lee. Lee is such a tough player. He's my kind of guy. Comes to play every night. He laces up his sneakers. It is 5-2. Boilermakers over the Wolverines. 17 and a half minutes to go first half. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale. Glad you could join us on ESPN. Boy, nice move inside by Mitchell. He was labeled one of my most improved players in the nation last year. He has great body control. Gene Cady has been talking about him in a mold of Sidney Moncrief, who he coached when he was on Eddie Sutton's staff at Arkansas. Pretty good mold. Oh, he's not in that class yet. That's an m, &M or a mismatch, and I like Mr. Mitchell. Grant trying to get inside. Walk, yes. It's 7-2, and Purdue has it going all its way. The second turnover for the Wolverines. It's been frustration city in the Big Ten for Gary Grant, who's been brilliant in the pre-conference schedule. Had a tough night against Illinois and is starting off very shaky right now. 18th leading scorer in Michigan history. And they'll lose the ball out of bounds this time. And Kramer will come in. You're going to like him, a left-hander from out of Quincy, Illinois. Played at a high school that produced Bruce Douglas, uh, the leading assist man and skills leader in the Big Ten from out of Illinois. He's a very competitive player. Jack Had a thigh bruise. They weren't sure he was going to be able to play. Here's another loose ball. But Thompson runs it down to Gilbert. Gilbert trying to make something happen and gets the roll. The guy's got the wide body. He's going to make my whole wide body team, Mike. He doesn't have good quickness, but he's a good shooter. Troy Lewis, the leading scorer of a year ago, has been in a little bit of a slump. Buries that one. And here's a loose ball. Away again. Third turnover against Michigan. If Michigan definitely has a chance to win tonight, they have to have more patience and reduce the game in terms of using the clock. They cannot go up and down 94 feet right now with this Purdue basketball team. Jeff Arnold is into the ball game. That's uh, number 43, replacing McCants at center. He'll get a breather. They have 10 fouls to give at the post position. Arnold and McCants are both big and strong and can be very effective down in the post. Arnold at the high post. Dumps it inside. Gets it back, and Arnold will try his luck. Won't go. Joubert with a good rebound. See, Joubert has those heavy thighs. He's an excellent passer. He sees people really well. He was the biggest times. I'll tell you, he was such a big-time scorer in high school. In fact, holds all the records in the state of Michigan. Loose ball, and it will be out to Michigan. One record he holds at Michigan. He is the number one assist man all time for the Wolverines. Timeout on the court. Our score, Purdue 9, Michigan 4. Out here, it's me alone against the course. But in the financial world, you need all the help you can get. You need the Payne Weber Army behind you. Even golf legends can use some financial backup. Payne Weber is ready to roll, putting all its resources at your command. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. Now that's the kind of army you want behind you. You know, young man, when you came along, your mom and I had to give up one hot little sports car. Now, can you see Daddy with some big station wagon with wood on the side? No. You know what's under there? A German-engineered fuel-injected engine. It goes for This is where your stroller and playpen go. Come on, let's go. I'm not going to trade in my driving gloves for dishpan hands. 
Defensive transition definitely is a must. Michigan must get back and reduce the conversion area and the fast break opportunities of Purdue. Number two, they have to be patient on offense. They gotta move the ball and make people play defensively and move the ball from side to side. Also, Purdue to win has to establish an inside power game to take away some of Michigan's quickness out front and establish their post people inside. And Stevens must stay out of foul trouble. If he gets in foul trouble, they really lack a legitimate backup point guard who has pr produced in terms of being effective. And that's what hurt them against North Carolina in their only loss. 9-4 Purdue right now, 15-55 to go first half. Guard Thompson with the basketball to Hughes. They've got to get some basketball out of Mark Hughes and Osterbahn. That was a set play during a timeout by Frieder. They get the loose ball as Grant missed the left-handed shot, and Gilbert scores from inside on the follow. 9-6. Stevens, double team, got away from it. Lee, maybe should have taken the shot himself. Purdue's really trying to force the action, Mike. They're trying to create situations as we look at Gene Cady, who I believe is one of the most underrated coaches nationwide in terms of PR. He has to get to the Final Four for him to get the kind of exposure and the respect that he deserves. Well, you know, there's only so much publicity to go around, and you got Bob Knight and Digger Phelps in the same state. It makes it hard. Well, he's saying move over. A new star is on the block right now. Lee makes his move. Collision inside. Blocking foul. Pointing at Mark Hughes. Doug Lee starts driving, number 20. There he is, beating Joubert, taking the ball. Pulls up, the defensive player rotates over a step slow, and Ted Valentine, making his Big Ten debut as an official, 28 years of age, makes the call, a blocking call. Second team foul, McCants checks back in for Purdue. And they're calling that one a non-shooting well, foul. They had it prior to the release of the ball. They'll inbound it to Troy Lewis, the junior from Anderson, Indiana. Guarded by Jobert, who can be intense on defense. And a bad pass that time. Mitchell couldn't save it. Michigan changed defensively. They went to a 2-3 zone. Bill Feeder changing on the sideline. He looks like a welterweight champ with that towel draped across yes, his shoulder. shoulder. What a worker he is, too. And he's a great salesman. He can really sell Michigan. Thompson. He'll dump it off. Gilbert fakes the three-pointer, then passes inside. Bank shot won't go. Michigan having a tough time getting points inside. That was an excellent pass by Joubert. He really sees the open man. Fans won the foul with some contact there. Good pass inside the middle. That's the inside power they got to go to. The high-low entry, getting the ball down inside on the baseline of McCants. Michigan doesn't have the power to defend down a bit along the baseline. Five-point lead. Jobert almost caught in a five-second call. He's being guarded by Doug Lee. Jobert inside that three-point line. Loose ball. Whistle foul. It'll go against Michigan. And it looks like Mark Hughes again. Look at McCants fighting for position inside. There he is being fronted right now. Now they're going to reverse the ball. He's got inside position on you. Spins, seals him off. Tremendous job offensively. The key there was the ability to reverse the ball to the top of the circle and catch him being fronted, reversing to the goal. It's 11-6 with 14-13 to go in the first half of play from West Lafayette, Indiana. Lee almost throws it away. Lewis saves it. More pressure by that Michigan defense. Michigan playing like a two, looks like a two-three zone right now, a matchup. Stevens to lead. They get it over to Lewis. Lewis double clutch, got caught up in the air, and they'll call the foul. Inside on Lloyd Vaught, the redshirt freshman out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's in there because Hughes is down with two personals. Lewis really started off slowly early this year, was in a slump, and came out of it in the latter part of the Michigan State game when they were down 10, and he finally got hot, hit seven of his last nine. He was cold Mr. Basketball in Indiana with yeah. Delray Brooks, who's now playing so in the first game with Providence, losing that tough game to Syracuse. Great free throw shooter, hitting 83.3%. He's academic all Big Ten, a major in communication, so we have to watch out. You know, he visited UCLA along with uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell. The two of them went down there after becoming friends at Five Star Camp. And they went down to UCLA, and they became friends, and they decided to hook up and go to Purdue. <laughs> 
Michigan on the fast break out of the out of the free throw, and they'll get a bucket off the transition, and it's Grant. Gene Candy certainly doesn't like that effort defensively in getting back. Michigan runs it up. Gary Grant is super quick, and he's got quick hands. It's 13-8. Michigan zoning right now. Lee, nice pass. Got it back to Vaught. Vaught couldn't make the shot. And we've got a foul inside on Thompson. This is the kind of basketball they want out of Mitchell. They feel that Mitchell has become too much of a perimeter player. And I was at the staff meeting yesterday of Purdue. Gene Cady invited me to it. There's the kick down inside to McCants. Now look at the inside position right now by Mitchell. He's got great inside position for the offensive rebound. And that's what they want on him. They say Mitchell's becoming too much of a perimeter player. Goes to the free throw line. A five point Purdue lead and rims the first one. He's from out of Toledo, Ohio. His sister's in the media business. She works on uh, W, I guess, Channel 2 in Detroit. She's a newscaster, he told me today. So my sister Charlene, please say hello. I, say, I can't say hello to Charlene. That's no. illegal. Wouldn't want to be caught doing something like that. 14-8, Purdue. Five points for Mitchell. I really like Gary Grant. I think Gary Grant has improved tremendously. He's free for the shot now, and he'll take it. Hit the front of the rim. Good rebound and hustle by Thompson. Nice pass inside. Glenn Rice with good inside position. Here's Bill Frieda. Done a tremendous job since he's been at Michigan. Two straight Big Ten championships. Lee with a running one-hander across the lane. Got his own rebound. Got it again. And draws a foul, and it'll be on board. Watch Lee penetrate right here. There's the little penetration. Splits the seam of the defense. And there he is. That's why he's my old Kurt Rambis team. A lot of guts and a lot of heart. Non-shooting foul. And they inbound to Stevens. And Stevens just had his pocket picked by Grant. Oh, nice pass. Great pass. And what a foul. As McCants really unloaded to prevent the basket. McCants gets his money's worth, doesn't he? Watch this pass by Grant. The head is up. He uses the great bounce pass. There's the entry. Takes it up. There's the body contact and the foul. Vaught will go to the line where he has not had a good year. My ball. My ball. If Michigan's going to start winning games in the Big Ten, they got to get productivity out of guys like Vaught and Hughes and Griffin and Osterbaum. Those big people have to start to contribute. They can't just rely on Jubeer, Grant, and, Austin, and Rice. Missed them both. Vaught is a case of a player who sat out a year to add some weight. He did that. Now they think he might be able to be a factor off the bench. 14-10, Purdue with the lead. And the Boilermakers all the way. Lee playing primarily on the perimeter unless he drives. Stevens, double clutch, got it. Stevenson splits the seam of the defense, gets right into the gap, and delivers the little jumper. First two for Everett Stevens, who averages 13 and a half points in the game. Very important against the zone to get into that gap. Joubert to Thompson around a good screen, missed the shot. They're getting the shot stick, they're just not making it. Stevens ahead of the pack, foul by Thompson. That's his second. Michigan very slow in getting back defensively. We talked about one of the keys being defensive transition. Purdue is trying to right now get the ball down the court and get that easy basket. Just listen to the numbers on Stevens, what he has done this year. 13 and a half points, seven assists, shooting 64% from the floor, 50% from three-point range, and 71% from the free throw line. Has he sold any popcorn or any tickets if along the way? If they asked him, he probably, oh, you can't say selling tickets anymore, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Hits you know, the free throw. In high school, his high school was 32-1. and one. They lost to Simeon High School in Chicago for the state championship, and they were led by one of the great high school players, the late Ben Wilson, who was killed mm -hmm. at lunch hour in Chicago. Mitchell checks out of the ball game. Kip Jones, a sophomore from Decatur, Indiana, comes in. What a, Had a uh, sprained ankle. I didn't think he'd be able to play. Hey, Mike, what a con job by Gene Cady. He said today at the luncheon, there's no way Frieder and Vitala, Kip Jones can even dress up. Here he is playing. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be limping either. 
17-10. Purdue with the lead. Gilbert, nice pass to Thompson, who had to double clutch it and got it off to Rice, who blew the layup. Here comes Lee. Three on three as Michigan got back there, and then Lee double dribbled it. He's a transfer from out of Texas A&M. Started his career at Shelby oh, Metcalf down in Texas A&M country. It's 17-10 Purdue. Behold the beer belly. 50 million Americans need a shortcut to get from fat to flat. Introducing the Gut Buster. It's the ultimate fitness machine specifically designed to firm and flatten the stomach as nothing else can. And ladies, if you're as serious as he is, that flat stomach you had in high school can be yours again. Basic spring-ups like these work the upper abdominal region. Reverse for tension-assisted high-risers. This sturdy unit travels easily, so you can exercise anywhere. And it's yours with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go away head gut busters if you're serious about a flat stomach exercise your right to call toll free now to order your gut buster call 1-800-228-8500 that's 1-800-228-8500 use your credit card to avoid cod charges or send check or money order for 1995 plus three dollars shipping and handling to the gut buster department 5 canton ohio 44750 that toll free number again is 1-800-228-8500 ESPN is your network for college basketball and will be presenting a Big East Classic. St. John's against Georgetown live Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And this may be the only time in the next few years you'll see these teams meeting each other, both coming off a loss. Yeah, they both came off losses. Villanova beat St. John's. St. John's had their first trip out of New York, uh, the state of New York. <laughs> I know they played once up in Niagara. In fact, Luke Kornacek is going to get the Ambassador of New York Award from Mayor Koch <laughs> for keeping his team at home. And Georgetown, I'm proud. My alma mater, seat in the hall. See, now all of a sudden they won a big game. I'm claiming this P.J. This is the first Car time you've mentioned it. Yeah, P.J. Carlissimo <laughs> did a great job. They beat uh, Georgetown by better than 20. Hey, they didn't just beat Georgetown. They, uh, they overwhelmed the Hoyas. Illinois has come back. Last time we heard they were down by 10 against Michigan State. They have come back to win 79-72. And Iowa has beaten Wisconsin tonight. Jobert off balance jumper and got it. Jobert getting good position offensively, shooting the nice little baseline jump shot. You know, Mike, had he not gotten all that publicity out of high school, many people would say that he had a very good college career. Sure. His potential is one of the uh, toughest things you can hang on a kid. Well, he had so much print. He had more print than any player I remember except maybe Magic Johnson coming out of uh, Lansing. Lee with a perimeter jumper. He can hit that one. Here's the follow inside by Kip Jones. That ankle looked okay there. Got sure great did. inside position. He gives them a good rebound, the nickname Indiana Jones. Grant on the drive, got the basket and drew the foul. What a pretty move. Gary Grant with superb quickness to the goal. Look at Gene Cady. He can't believe what he's looking at. Cheer up, coach. Watch Gary Grant right now. I mean, this is quickness. He spins, he whirls. He looks like a halfback. Looks like he can play for Schenbeckler in the Wolverines. He flies. Look at the body control, the little finger roll. And then he watches it goes down. He's from out of Canton, Canton Ohio, McKinley Tech. And Frieda said, I taught him how to drive like that. Nice call, official. I like that call. Grant has four points. We'll go to the line trying to make it five. 75% free throw shooter. We'll be up in Ann Arbor next week. We got the Indiana, the General Bob Knight, taking his gang down to uh, Ann Arbor to play with University of Michigan. That'll be fun. 1915, the Wolverines pull in four. Both of these are very young teams. You can expect them to get better throughout the season. And in this league, they have to. Four teams in the latest poll in the top 12. It's certainly the premier conference in America right now, Mike. I don't think there's any doubt at all, really, from top to bottom. Steven, tough shot. It wouldn't go for him, but the rebound goes to Jeff Arnold, who's into the ball game for the first time. Purdue beating Michigan on the offensive board. Mitchell misses. Rebounder Rice. Rice is one of your tremendous sophomores in America. He really ranks right up there with Hammonds and Callaway and Purvis Ellison. He's a great sophomore from out of Flint, Michigan. He's got to do it in there all by himself. By far the leading rebounder for this ball club. Rice now has five rebounds so far tonight here in the first half with 9.45 to go. Grant, another tough move inside, didn't get the roll on that one. 
and then came over and committed the personal foul trying to make up for it. Grant has got superb quickness one-on-one. -on -one. He's a very tough player to defend as Fisher comes out of floor to give him some point guard play. They got to get some quality minutes out of Fisher or a kid by the name of Tony Jones as a backup to Everett Stevens. Fisher's one of the co-captains, one of the seniors on the ball club out of Delphi, Indiana. And he's the last of the 84 Big Ten championship for the team. They've had so much success on the Gene Cady four years in a row to the NCAA tournament six years in a row he's been here they've been in national tournaments he's had a tremendous record in a Big Ten and he's just an intense competitor and really does a tremendous job all he needs is the visibility of the final four and to really be recognized nationally Lewis hits the free throw three for three from the line tonight five points and it's 21 15 the Boilermakers by six there's Bill Frieder who graduated from Michigan joined Johnny Orr's staff there and then became head coach already the second winningest coach in Michigan history behind Orr that's J.P. Oosterbaum in the ball game for the first time and Gilbert will draw the foul from Mitchell Except for Jobert and Grant, Michigan doing almost nothing on offense. Mitchell's got to defend him. Now they're in a two-man game with Grant and Jobert. Jobert with the wide body. Look, he uses that body. He gets Mitchell to play behind him, gives him a little pump fake, which a good scorer will utilize, and gets fouled on the play. It's very important defensively to be able to deny the ball, number one, or number two, to try and get around a three-quarter the offensive player. Jobert now with seven points. He's been shooting better in the last few ball games. Early in the season, down around 40%. They called him the judge. Uh, that's his nickname. Uh, uh, last year, he was a little heavier. I called him the judge and jury and everything combined. I mean, he was so wide. He's along with my guy. Griffin comes in, a good shooter right now. Comes off the bench, to, says Doug Lee, but that's Mr. Griffin on the floor. It's but, the other 20. You know, Mike, uh, you talk about Jubair. Antoine played for an outstanding high school coach, Perry Watson, from out of Southwestern High School, and they got a really an outstanding team again this year. He has eight points. There's a trap. Of Michigan trap. 17, and the steals. Jobert and Grant, two on two. Oh, nice two-man basketball. Grant got the bucket and draws the foul on top of it. And the defense looks like it can produce the three-point play. And he hugs his man, Joubert, says, nice pass, Antoine. Now watch the trap. Here comes Joubert over. He pops the ball loose. Now Grant, they're off to the races. Now Joubert uses good judgment. Nice little pass to Grant. Now Grant with the great body control to draw the foul from Doug Lee. See, Doug did not have both feet planted, which you must do defensively initially, and face the offensive player. Joubert and Grant, to this point, have 14 of the 17 points for Michigan. Now 15 of, uh, of 20. It's 21-20, Purdue by one. Michigan zoning. Lewis gives it up to Stevens. Crowd trying to encourage the Boilermakers. It's one of the loud crowds in America. This crowd really gets into their basketball. All their home games are sold out this year for only the second time in a long, long time. As Lewis hits the jumper to make it a three-point game. Lewis hits the jump shot, Mike, but that was clinic basketball. Excellent ball reversal. They swing the ball side to side for the high percentage shot. Grant to Jobert. They're playing two-man offense right now, and it's working. I'll tell you, the judge is taking over right now. He's saying, I am the judge and the jury. <laughs> Ten for Jobert. One-point ball game again, and here's a big foul on Jobert who really beefs about it, thought he had the basketball. Joubert's got a lot of charisma as a player. As Bill Frieda checking with his assistant coach. Lewis has the ball. There's Joubert reaching in. As soon as you reach in, I mean, he just, oh, definitely going to call off. I look at Joubert and say, no, no, no. He definitely hooked him. Uh, you're right. They're going to make the call whether he gets uh, all ball initially or not. Especially on the road. And Lewis goes to the line. Hughes comes back in, and Rice will get a breather. 
Mike, you know, if you read all the great backcourts in America and you look at Lewis and you look at Everett Stevens, I have to believe right now that the number one backcourt has to be Jeff Lebo and Kenny Smith down in North Carolina with Moulton and Maxwell right behind him as Melvin McCants comes back on the floor. But after that duo, you got to talk about uh, Stevens and Lewis and Chapman down there at uh, Kentucky with right. Davender. I mean, there's, to me, four of the best backcourts in the country. Free throw is good, 24-22, Purdue by a pair. Kentucky actually has a three-guard offense, offense also with James Blackman. Lewis, 6'4", a junior. Excellent free throw shooter, as you can see, and he finally misses one, but he's five out of six tonight, and the Boilermakers up by two with 8-10 and counting. First half of play from West Lafayette, Indiana. Grant working on Stevens. Good match up there, and he traveled. Grant needs a little help inside. You cannot win consistently, and Bill Frieder knows this with just a perimeter game. He has to get a little help inside, a little activity. Here comes the crowd right now. The sixth man has arrived in West Lafayette. They score a basket here. It's going to explode. Three-pointer. Yes. Jobert gets it inside to Oosterbahn, and Oosterbahn will get a foul out of the inside play. J.P. Oosterbahn, his dad was a star at Michigan in the 60s. There also was a Benny Oosterbahn, a coach who's a distant relative, used to coach football at Michigan. There it goes down to J.P. When I think of J.P., the best interviewer in America is from out of Detroit, J.P. McCarthy. Here's J.P. Oosterbahn. The ball goes down into him, gets fouled on a play, and will go to the line. It's one thing I miss about Detroit, living in that area. You don't realize it, Mike. They have one of the great interviewers in America on radio by the name of J.P. McCarthy, and I thought about that when I see J.P. Oosterbaum. Lee misses the free throw, or rather, the, excuse me, the second foul on Lee as Oosterbaum misses the free throw. It's the second one, though. Timeout on the court, 7.43 to go. First half of play, Big Ten action from West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue over Michigan by four. So how much do you and Michael need? Dad, what are you talking about? This fancy new car. I know what they go for. Really? We don't need help. Where was it built? Germany. You need help. Dad, come Look on. Look how it handles. A car like this is expensive. A car like this? It's a Volkswagen. Volkswagen? Mm hmm A Volkswagen Jetta GL. Oh. And I guess you don't need my help. Well, not with a Volkswagen. There's something else you want to buy? Let me help with the Volkswagen. For you a live doubleheader coming up on Thursday night. Our first game features Danny Manning in Kansas against Temple, followed by Dean Smith's Tar Heels of North Carolina against Maryland. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. Dick? John Chaney, certainly one of the most underrated coaches, along with Gene Cady from out of Temple, and they got a Rip Van Winkle guard that's a sleeper by the name of Nate Blackwell. This kid deserves a lot of national publicity, and that's an interesting matchup. Maryland, it's struggle city right now for Bob sure. Wade. Uh, he just doesn't have the personnel. Coached his heart out against North Carolina State. As Look at those stats right now. Ten big points for Antoine, and now he's showing he's a leader. Look at him taking over. He's addressing the Jew. He wants to be a lawyer. Look at him. He and Grant have 18 of the 23 points for the Wolverines, who are down by four right now. Michigan started in a man-to-man. Now they're playing that 2-3 zone. Stevens from three-point range, and the rebound goes to Hughes. Hughes takes a lot of space. He's a space eater. He's got to use that body to help this club. Jobert. He looks Give him a more, dozen. He looks much more impressive tonight than he did against Middle Tennessee State. I saw that game, and he was MIA, missing in action. 27-25. <laughs> Jobert's hit five or seven shots from the floor. Lee left alone. Oh, Dangerous shooter, but he missed that one. Grant with a loose ball. Michigan can tie. 
Ran into the lane, lost it. But it's picked up and put in by Mike Griffin, the freshman from Franklin Park, Illinois, and we're tied. Crowd certainly doesn't like that. Griffin gets the easy garbage layup, but that's the kind of contribution you need from your bench. Mitchell brings it outside. Here comes a trapping defense from Michigan. Yeah, they, they want to get in the half-court trap. I'm going to make you the analyst. You know your hoops, Mr. Patrick. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Nice move by Lewis. Double team takes the shot anyway and still makes it. Troy Lewis, tough baseline jump shot. That's a pro-balanced J from behind the backboard. Looks like they're going to go to a trap. He's going to try to invite him into a trap defensively. Lewis with 14 points for the Boilermakers. Michigan doing a good job avoiding the trap. And we're going to have a travel on this one call on Glenn Rice. It's very important. It's very important, Mike, when you know a team wants to go to a trapping defense to spread offensively to eliminate them to have the opportunity to trap. And that's what Michigan well drilled in that half court sequence. 29 27. Lee almost lost it. Got it to Lewis. Back to Stevens. Good ball movement, and they get it wide open to Mitchell. He's a strong driver. He's a slasher. Got the great upper body. He just needs more intensity and more consistency to his game. Second team all-conference a year ago. He's got seven tonight. So you don't want to pick up your dribble. That's a no-no what Gary Grant just did. Now he's staring at the defense. Good entry. Jobert guarded by Lee. Goes to the baseline. Pulls up for a shot. It won't go, but he'll get the foul on Lee. And if it's on Lee, that's his third here in the first half. Lee did not like the call. Lee gets bumped right here on the screen. Glenn Rice lays a screen on him. There's Joubert now. Joubert getting the ball one-on-one. -on -one. His own man really screened him out. He gets screened out by his own man, and Gary Muncy with the call. Lee out of the ball game as Gene Cady will have to sit him down with three personal fouls. Cady was a football player, played three weeks with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's a violation. Looked Five like a seconds. Fight. In college basketball, Mike, remember, you have to have the ball touched on the floor by a teammate fired to the count of five. In the NBA, you just have to release it by five. Joe Bear in and out. Tip almost goes. Loose ball, foul underneath. It will be against Purdue. And give credit to Mike Griffin keeping it alive. No way you're going to win in this league unless you play physical and you play intimidating basketball. You got to bang, you got to crash, you got to really knock them down. Look at Griffin banging inside. Who said he's a redshirt freshman? I mean, this kid is banging. Look at him. He doesn't have the big body. It's Mitchell with a personal foul, his second. And we may find out how deep both of these benches are tonight. Mitchell misses the free throw, however. That's one of the problems of Purdue. They really don't have a great deal of depth. In fact, against Michigan State, not one of the people off the bench took a shot. Stevens won't go for it. We have a whistle and a foul underneath. It's going to be against Michigan, and it looks like Jobert. It would be his second. Bill Frieda, to me, has been one of the most maligned coaches in America, along with Jimmy Beheim for being winners. In fact, they were the recipients of my Guy V. Lewis and Joe B. Hall Award as the most maligned guy who has won. The guy has won two Big Ten championships in a row, and everybody gets on his case because of their performance in the NCAA. Guy Lewis got his share, didn't he? Well, it's just like Bo Schembechler. The guy wins, wins, wins. I mean, the guy turns out winner after winner, and everybody says, but look at bowl time. Troy Lewis goes to the line. He's hit five of six there tonight. <laughs> Got the shooter's roll on that one. It's 31-28, the margin three. Purdue still in control. He was scintillating when he played in high school out of Anderson. He and Delray Brooks were the talk of this state. Delray started his career at Indiana and is now playing for Ricky Patino at Providence College. Lewis, excellent concentration. Five minutes left in the first half. Purdue by a half dozen. These five minutes are big for Michigan. If Purdue gets one of their spurts, they're a spurt team. They're going to trap if that ball gets to the wing. Hughes came out to help relieve the pressure, and they get it back to Joe Bear. 
They get a spurt. They can break it open. It's important for Feeder's team to stay right with them here. Rice, that's a tough shot to take with 14,000 fans screaming at you. And this will be an offensive foul. That looked like a good call. Lewis out of control going down the side of the lane. Here's Purdue. Watch this right now in transition. There's Lewis. He's looking for the opening. There's the defensive player. Look at Glenn Rice. Both feet are planted. He defensively steps in, squares his body. Good call by Mike Stockner for the charge. Send Lewis, or Rice, excuse me, to the line. Glenn, a 74% free throw shooter. He has a chance to be really a star at Michigan. I really believe he has the potentiality. He doesn't have the mentality of a star. Yet. Once he starts to believe that I'm special and I'm a star, this kid is going to put big numbers on a board over at the University of Michigan. Five points on the night. He averages 15.5, third leading scorer on this ball club. And as you see, the leading man in rebound. He's from out of Flint, Michigan. He's produced so many great players. It's a hot bed of basketball up there. Great individual talent. Purdue, 33. Michigan, 28. We're down to 427 to go in the first half. Peter's kids are doing a good job defensively. They're really disguising their man-to-man -man and their zones, their matchups. They're really doing a good job. Mitchell with the baseline jumper. Can't get it. Kept alive inside. The final shot by Lewis. That's a big problem for Michigan. We talked about it early, Mike. They do not have the baseline power to rebound. Oh, where are you, Terry Mills? That's what Bill Feeder's saying. The superstar who's ineligible this year. Troy Lewis has 18 first-half points. Grant silences the crowd with his jumper. That's what the star does. He says, hey, scream all you want, baby. Give me the <laughs> rock, and I'm delivering the deuce. And Grant has 10. He and Gilbert have totally carried the load. Lewis, who is on fire. They can't handle him. He is absolutely, as you said, Mike, he's scintillating right now. He's sizzling. 20 points for Lewis. He has 20 of the 37. Gilbert trying to make it happen. Gets it off to Grant. Grant missed the layup. Under pressure, but he missed it. And the fans are really pumped. I'm really pumped. How can you not get excited? There's the high-low entry. Getting it inside. Can't handle him down inside. Get a T.O., Frieda. Get a timeout. They're ready to explode. 39-30. Need a T.O. right about now. The fans giving Purdue a standing ovation. They're going to be tough to beat on this floor. Bear again silences the crowd. They're getting an outstanding performance out of Joubert and Grant. They just do not have enough help from their friends across the front. You're right about that. 39-32. As soon as they cross midcourt, the crowd quiets down so they can run the ball. <laughs> Lewis leans into one. About the only thing he's missed all night. Here comes Joe Bear. Three pointer. And going after the rebound is Hughes. Bad foul on Mark Hughes. Unofficially, that's number three. Hughes from out of Muskegon, Michigan. He's got the big, strong body. Steps slow. There's Joubert trying to shoot the three-pointer. Now, here comes Hughes. I mean, he bangs him. Bo Schembeck was watching on TV. said, I want that horse in the football uniform. 6'8", 240. That's, uh, that's linebacker material, isn't it? McCants will go to the free throw line. They got Excuse a guy me. playing football right now, but I remember Paul Jokic, who was recruited as a basketball player from out of Brother Rice High School. A big, big strong, tough kid. He can run, too. He's got great hands, also. He's like 6'9", 245, if I remember. McCants visited, would you believe this? He visited Notre Dame, Michigan, and Purdue. Those were his three right. big choices. But you're allowed five, Mike. He's no dummy. <laughs> you know what a fourth one was? Hawaii. He went to the blue skies of Hawaii. That ought to count for two trips. <laughs> this kid is smart, boy. I'll tell you one thing. 40-32. McCants makes them both. It's a nine-point lead again. 2-13 to go in the first half. And Purdue has broken up a real close ball game and push the lead out to nine points. Purdue, 41. 
Michigan 32. Back in a moment. Ma, take your hands off your eyes. I can't. Not even doing 55. That's a matter of opinion. What is it you call this, this, uh... German-engineered, 16-valve Volkswagen Scirocco. It should be outlawed. Ma... Your father used to own a Volkswagen. It was a nice little car. This is not a nice little car. It's not supposed to be. This is the 80s. Power, control. Mm. That's what really counts. I'm sure it does. Could you please pull over? You want to drive? I want to walk. I'm Jimmy Connors, and it's about time you met my partner, my financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need Whoa. some help. We need some help. You need Payne Weber behind you for financial expertise, sound advice. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. Welcome. You're awfully stiff. You've got to loosen up a little bit. It's 41-32 right now. We got right now Mr. Lewis 101 against Guard Thompson. He beats Thompson to the baseline. Now watch him square his body. For all you kids out there, the key to releasing that jump shot was his ability to square his shoulders to the basket. Now look at you bear stepping off a screen, shooting the jumper, reading the screen really well. Something Steve Walford does better than I think anybody in basketball. Reading the screens and also down the stretch like yesterday. He was brilliant against Ohio State when it was clutch time. Troy Lewis on the season shooting 47.1%. Tonight he is shooting 75% has 20 points in the first half. Well, he's a much better shooter than 47%. As we see the 20 points by Lewis, he's really, I would think, a 53, 55% shooter. Stay with us at halftime. We'll have Bob Lee in our studios. We'll have scores and highlights from all across the country. Some interesting games tonight. And Dick Vitale speaks out. What is it tonight? Well, we're going to talk about freshman eligibility, about the boosters involved in recruiting. Foul is on Stevens. That's his first. And we'll also take a look at the aftermath of that uh, tough incident, Temple, Rhode Island, something you don't like to see in college basketball. Look more like a hockey game. Grant will go to the free throw line with two minutes to go, and we'll have a reaction from both coaches after that incident over the weekend, too. Grant had a tough night against Illinois in the first Big Ten game. Glenn Blackwell had 28 against him, a kid from out of Highland Park, Michigan. Tonight, Blackwell came back against Michigan State with 24 and leading Illinois to the W. And Darrell Johnson had another big game with 27. Johnson, to me, again, is one of your better players in a nation who doesn't get publicity. He's from Flint, Michigan also. Another one. Grant in and out on the second free throw after he made the first. It's 41-33 with a minute 55 to go in the half. They got to go down inside right now. They got to try and get something inside along the boxes. Michigan zoning on the inside, playing, trying to match up, play man on the inside. Now they're playing man to man defense. They got to go down inside, run up high, low entry from the camps. Stevens checking the situation. They're trying to get it to him inside. Shot clock is down to 16 seconds. Ball goes out of bounds. Very dif difficult to defend a team when they get a lot of movement offensively and a lot of screening and motion offensively. It's very difficult to defend that kind of team. It's easy to defend a team that's stationary. Shot clock at nine. Stevens trying to make his move. It's down to three. Somebody's got to put it up. That was very, very close to being the shot clock violation. Jones tried to keep it alive, but couldn't, and then they called the a double dribble on Michigan. Kip Jones missed a tough offensive rebound. He's going to give them another player off the bench to give them some depth, something they're going to need to compete for the Big Ten Championship. Hey, if Indiana, I was telling Gene Katie today, I said if Bob Knight ever gets productive basketball out of Dean Garrett in the middle of that lane, I really believe that they got a great chance to stand tall in New Orleans for a national championship. There are other very people tough. are outstanding. They need inside play on a consistent basis from Dean Garrett. <laughs> Purdue with the basketball and an eight-point lead. Logically, you don't want to really go down double figures in that locker room, Mike. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will be out to Purdue. Tony Jones, number 25, is in the ballgame for the Boilermakers. Freshman out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
Katie was an outstanding high school coach out of Beloit, Kansas. He went from Beloit, Kansas. So we look at Kramer, the left-hander coming in from out of Quincy, Illinois. And then he went from Beloit to Hutchison Junior College with a tremendous record in Kansas. Then he joined Eddie Sutton's staff. And then it was Western Kentucky and then six big years here at Purdue. Tried to get it inside. The foul is going to be on Oosterbahn reaching over the top. Can't play behind a guy defensively. You can't allow a guy to play behind you. McCants right now inside. He dishes it out. Now watch him try to get position. There he is leaning inside. He's trying to get him on his hip. And once he gets you in that position and locks, the only thing you can do basically is follow him. Ooster by the load at 6'10", 240. McCants is from out of Mount, I believe it was Mount Carmel High School in Chicago, Illinois. McCants, two out of two from the line tonight. It's that one. Bill Feeder told us in the car going over, I had to speak at a luncheon today with Feeder and with uh, uh, with Katie. Now, wait a minute. You said you had to speak well, at a lunch. You love it. <laughs> I was telling a story about Feeder, what a fanatic he is. He was looking at Glenn Rivers play one time. Glenn Rivers was a, a nine-star player, according to one of the scouts there. And he says, hey, Bo Derrick's a 10. Feeder panicked to show what a fanatic he is. He ran and called the secretary and says, where does Bo Derrick play? He didn't know who Bo Derrick was. He's absolutely a fanatic and a wacko. <laughs> A 10-point lead for Purdue. <laughs> I hope that's an apocryphal story. Uh, I'll tell you what, I was teasing them about that at the lunch, and they went nuts when I used that story today. Kramer gets it off to Thompson. Thompson's really been quiet. He had seven three-pointers in a row. Nice entry. Great pass oh. to Rice. Excellent two-man play, but Guard Thompson deserves the credit with the recognition. He had seven three-pointers in a row against Illinois Chicago. They may need them in the second half, down by eight. 17 seconds left. Purdue will probably play for the last shot. Stevens in control of it. They better play for the last shot or not face Mr. Katie in that locker room. Kramer is the uh, young man with no uniform number. Nor supposed to wear 24, wearing 34. There's the shot by Troy Lewis near the buzzer. Troy Lewis with 22 first-half points. Purdue has 45. He has nearly 50% of them. We have had the Troy Lewis show here at halftime, and psychologically, Michigan goes down by 10 as we look at Gene Cady. He looks like a football coach walking off. He has that look of Bo Schembechler. We're at halftime in West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue is leading Michigan. Our score at halftime, 45-35. Let's go to Bob Lee. Thank you, Mike. It is a noisy Mackey Arena. That is our halftime score. The Boilermakers up by 10. At this halftime, we will check everybody in the top 20 who is in action tonight. We'll take a look at highlights of our first game. Also, if you've not seen them, a look at that ugly brawl between Temple and URI that occurred Saturday night in Kingston, Rhode Island. And also back to hear Dick Vitale get up on his soapbox and get some thoughts off his chest. We're at halftime, number six in the country. Purdue is leading it by 10. Before the government gets hold of your tax return, maybe you should get hold of the Wall Street Journal. After all, it's your money. At least for the time being. Call 800-554-9000 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-554-9000 now for the Wall Street Journal. It's one thing to say you fight friction. It's another thing to prove it. Kendall Motor Oil did. First, ordinary piston rings were plated with pure gold. Then, a prestigious independent laboratory ran them under stop-and-go driving conditions for 5,000 miles. The results? Look, Kendall protected the soft gold. A remarkable test only Kendall has taken. Now, doesn't that tell you something? Kendall Motor Oil, for protection worth its weight in gold. Being an all-round cowboy isn't always a case of throwing a perfect loop. 
Sometimes it's a sack of potatoes. And when you're ready for a second opinion, push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream for a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Well, that was really good. What's more? Sure. Head for Bush Beer. Head for the mountains. ESPN's College Basketball, Michigan and Purdue. Brought to you by the 1987 German-engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealer. And by Nike. Halftime, good evening. I'm Bob Lee. Purdue engineering a 10-point lead at halftime over Michigan in West Lafayette. 45-35 is our score. Let's uh, get you caught up on what's been happening around the ranked teams in the top 20. Iowa tonight at home against Wisconsin in the Big Ten. No problems. Iowa takes an early lead, coasting to a 15-point win. First game of our doubleheader, our big Monday doubleheader here on ESPN. Providence College and number five, Syracuse. This was a nail-biter. PC so very tough on that home floor in Rhode Island. Delray Brooks goes to three-point country and gives PC, the Friars, an eight-point lead on Jim Beheim's club, but the Orangemen are able to mount a comeback. Watch Ronnie Cycli here pick up this loose ball. Greg Monroe will put it up on the alley-oop. Derek Coleman, the freshman, yeah, that's the way to do it. Syracuse is up by three, but PC goes back to three-point country again. In fact, here's Brooks. The Friars shot 63% from three-point country in the first half and led by three at halftime. Tight battle in the second half. Herman Harid to Ronnie Cycli, and we're tied at 62. The Friars refuse to give at home. Yasek Duda will pull out a rebound here and give PC a six-point lead, but too much personnel, too much height, and too much defense for Syracuse down the stretch. Monroe, Sherman Douglas, 180s, and Howard Trish puts it home. Syracuse wins at 89 to 85 in the first game tonight, live on ESPN. DePaul took an early lead on the Paladins of Furman at the Rosemont Horizon, posting a 17-point win, 81 to 64. Temple with a victory over George Washington. Nate Blackwell had 20 points, when, including a big late jumper. And by the way, 26 in a row now at McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia for Temple. Illinois outscoring Michigan State 26 to 8 at a crucial juncture of the second half, and comes from behind to defeat Michigan State in Champaign by seven points. Pittsburgh struggling against Akron. Tico Cooper with a rebound of a missed free throw inside the last minute. Charles Smith fouled out early in the second half. Was not a factory at 24 in the first half. The Panthers get by and get by with zips by 2 points, 67 to 65. Navy, David Robinson goes over 2,000 career points. He had 31 tonight and 16 rebounds. Navy easily over East Carolina. And Duke has won 21 straight at home at Cameron with an easy win over William and Mary. And Quinn Snyder, the reserve guard, had a career high 19 points. Duke now has a 10 and 1 record on the season. Now we mentioned what happened with Temple and Rhode Island. It happened at the Caney Gym in Kingston, Rhode Island, an ugly scene last Saturday. If we join what happened now, it's a game that quite evidently got out of hand and was loosely officiated. Damon Rivas and Bonzi Colson. Colson from URI, Rivas of Temple going here for the rebound. They tangled. Left hook by Colson. Okay, technical foul. Colson goes to his bench to cool his jets. He's had the tee called on the dead ball. Howard Evans comes over from Temple. He has a few things to say. They restrain Colson, but then Blackwell is hit by Colson, and that ignites it. A couple of kicks to the groin by Temple's Tim Perry on Colson, and all heck breaks loose. Now, Dennis Tubbies, number 32 in white for URI, as this will sort itself out, will be hit from behind by Derek Brantley. Right there of Temple, and then another Temple player comes in, a very ugly scene, and the Owls head coach, John Cheney, irate at the officials. It's ridiculous. When we've, the, we've traveled on the road, and I tell you, this is one of the worst that I've ever seen in my life. They came out and did a job, like one-eyed jacks. I'm just going to request that I never see those officials again. It's, it's the law of the, uh, uh, the survival of the fittest, rather, and, and uh, it's up to officials to call it and see it and keep it under control. They didn't tonight, and that's why there was a a breakout which is unfortunate for everybody involved and you would think that the atlantic 10 will be studying those same videotapes and freeze framing it and identifying people and maybe some action will be taken we haven't talked about this violence problem much recently it has not been a problem but it got out of hand in rhode island the other night we are at halftime we've got a quarter of a game going at a sold out mackey arena you can't get a seat to a purdue game this year and the boilermakers have a 10-point lead in this one on michigan
Before the government gets hold of your tax return, maybe you should get hold of the Wall Street Journal. After all, it's your money. At least for the time being. Call 800-228-1900 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-228-1900 now for the Wall Street Journal. You Earth people keep stars in a bowl? Camel's chicken and star soup. Why do you put stars where you speak? That's the way we eat now. This is the way we eat. Campbell's tastes good. <laughs> kids may be different, but Campbell's knows what they love. That's why we have six delicious soups for kids. If you eat where you speak, do you drink where you listen? Campbell's soup is good food. <laughs> this is the place you come to for quality and more. And prices that are known across the land. The place for Ace Best Buys, like a swing arm lamp for $5.99. Ace is the place. GE two-pack frosted bulbs for 19 cents after rebate, and Ace automatic night lights for $2.99 a pair. Ace is the place with the help of hardware man. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Is it true that a Big Mac attack starts with a craving for two all-beef patties? Oh, boy, does it. Followed by a tendency to repeat yourself? Oh, boy, does it. Does and it. a total loss of concentration? What's that? A total loss of concentration. What's that? An inability to speak clearly. Now we're going to trend to eat at that. An urge to share? Mm -hmm. uh, what about the Coke? Mm -hmm. ESPN's Big Monday continues. Good evening, I'm Bob Lee. We've got Michigan trailing number six in the country, Purdue, 45-35 at halftime. We've talked a great deal about academics, Proposition 48, during our halftime reports this year. Certainly, we want to give Dick a chance to be heard. Coach Dick Vitale, and he wants to speak his mind. It's a very big week in intercollegiate athletics. The NCAA convention is convening in San Diego. And one of the issues that will be brought up by Chancellor John Slaughter of the University of Maryland will be Proposal 54 to eliminate freshmen from being eligible in the revenue sports of basketball and football. And I applaud the Chancellor because I think back in my days when I was a freshman many a year ago and I had a lot of hair on the top of my head, the anxieties and the fears of walking on a college campus, not knowing where the buildings are, not knowing where to register, compound that with Mr. Superstar, the high school basketball star who enters that college campus with all the burden of trying to take that team to the promised land. It's too much for a young athlete to handle. I say eliminate freshman eligibility in basketball and football and let that athlete definitely be a student athlete first and learn a little bit about the academic environment and the social environment of that college atmosphere. Also, another issue that will be voted upon, boosters, involvement in recruiting of athletes eliminate the booster the guy that wants to be charlie tuner the big fish on campus the overzealous alumnus there are so many beautiful alumni out there who help their respective school but there's always the guy that wants to go that extra step i say eliminate the phone contact eliminate any kind of correspondence leave the recruiting to the college coaching staff I hope that these two issues go in a positive way and that we see freshmen declared ineligible in the revenue sports and that we see the booster saying bye-bye from the recruiting process. Thanks, Dick. There are a lot of good reasons to vote those things in at the NCAA meeting. Just to be cynical, I don't know how a school can politically not vote to eliminate freshman eligibility. We'll be back.
Why sit in the doldrums when you can ride the crest? The Atlantic Difference. Get the Atlantic Difference. 8% on your money market, guaranteed for two months. Call 1-800-4-ATLANTIC and make more money with Atlantic's money market. 8% guaranteed for two months. Call the Atlantic coast to coast for an 8% money market. The Atlantic, member FSLIC. shape of Mercury Sable. Let it take you away. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. ESPN's College Basketball, Michigan and Purdue. Brought to you by the Campbell Soup Company, makers of quality products for over 100 years. And by the Coca-Cola Company and bottlers of Coca-Cola Classic. It's red, white, and you. And by the new shape of the Mercury Cougar. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. Folks at Purdue and around West Lafayette think they have the stuff to be in the duel on the Delta, the final of four. We will see there. Number six in the country. Let's wrap up Big Monday now. Purdue up by 10. Back to Mike Patrick and Dick. Bob, thanks very much. It's 45-35 Purdue here at the half, and the Boilermakers exploded at one point after Michigan uh, had really come back and challenged them. That's the mark of a good team. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics, and nothing really stands out that much as you see the field goal percentages even. Neither team has really shot exceptionally well today in modern-day basketball. 47% is even below the norm, which is 50%. Three points, uh, Michigan really not utilizing it. Surprised in a way with Guard Thompson. And we look here, free throws, Purdue going to the line more often because they have an inside attack and you're gonna get fouled more often with your big people. Rebounds, no surprise. You expect Purdue to dominate. Right, and they have on a plus seven side. Turnovers. Turnovers, about even. About even, basically. Hey, we can read seven and six, huh? About <laughs> even. <laughs> and Purdue really has the advantage right now in terms of offensive scoring from their front court by a plus eight, and that's basically the difference here. I think early in the half, we'll see Purdue trying to get the ball inside. ESPN and Purdue number one down in Bloomington in the end, and say, no way. Taking a look at Michigan, you'll be able to tell that it was Jobert and Grant who really dominated everything. 25 of the 35 points. Without those guys, they're in a lot of trouble. They need more scoring out of Glenn Rice. He had seven. He was three for eight. Grant didn't shoot well, four for nine, but I thought he played a solid first half. Rice averaging 15 and a half points a game. He's going to need something there. And Thompson has absolutely nothing in the first half. He averages 12. An excellent outside shot. We may see him fire up some three-pointers. He has to do it. And on its side, it's been the Troy Lewis show. The surprise here for me has been Everett Stevens has really been quiet. One for six. They've contained him. This is basically his first bad game other than getting in foul trouble against Kenny Smith, uh, the all right. Rolls Royce performer at North Carolina. Does have four first-half assists, however. And they haven't needed much more scoring because Lewis has been on fire. He's only two points short of his season's high and nine points shy of his career high, which he got a year ago. We look at Gene Cady. I really believe one of the problems for both Michigan and Purdue, they haven't played enough what I call real premier competition early in the season because when they get to this level, and Gene Cady said it himself, we weren't really ready when we played North Carolina for that kind of rhythm and tempo mm -hmm. of the game. They look ready now. Lee will be the trigger man as Purdue will have possession starting the second half, and he gets it into Steven. If you look at their starting five, they're solid at every position. Point guard, excellent Stevens, and long-range shooter Lewis McCants on a box inside. Mitchell and Lee at the forwards. There's the back. Oh, they worked on that in practice yesterday. A back screen. They wave it off. No basket, and they'll call the foul on Lee. That will be his fourth. They ran a back screen. They worked on this in practice. The toughest screen to defend. We can't see the screen right here. They get the offensive foul on Lee. Climb in the back of guard Thompson. A gutty call, especially away from home. Take a look right here. There's the back screen. They throw the lob over the tap. 
I mean, he definitely runs right over the back of Gord Good Thompson. Call. Good gutty call. So the problem for Gene Cady is that Lee picks up his fourth personal foul, and a tough, aggressive inside player is going to have to sit down after only 20 seconds of the second half. Thompson, who did nothing on offense in the first half, Hughes with a pretty jump hook. they got to get more scoring. I've got to believe these kids who scored in high school, like Hughes and Griffin and Ustabam, have to decide to come to the front and start playing like Felicia. Hughes has a good touch, but that's his first two points. Lewis. That's probably the easiest shot he got all yeah, night, and it didn't go right. down. Stevens picks up Gary Grant, the junior from Canton, Ohio. There's Thompson, in and out. Jobert tried to keep it alive and did. Roll out of bounds off Purdue. Gene and look Katie. at Katie. I mean, he jumps off the platform. See, the court's up like on a stage. You're almost on Broadway here on the stage, and you've got to come up that platform. Look at him staring at you. See, he's down in a gully. He'll get up. Jumper by Grant won't go. Big battle under the boards. Loose ball. Foul on Hughes. That's not just a smart play at all, Mike. You're 90 feet away from the basket, reaching in, and then they give him a high five on it, and they slap skin. It's a nice play. I don't know why. And that is four on Mark Hughes. You have three fouls, Mike. You ex explain that to me. You have three fouls. You're 90 feet away from the basket, and you reach in in the backcourt and draw your fourth. I don't understand it. If I could explain it to you, I'd be coaching, and so would you. I know. That's why I'm sitting up here. They <laughs> ran me from the sideline. <laughs> This is Jones into the ball game. Michigan trying to pick up the defensive pressure. Gilbert can really get after it. See, Hughes can't play him. He's got four fouls. They're going down into the big horse now to Clydesdale. McCant, they got to take advantage. Feeder's got to get Hughes off the court. Go Feeder, number one. Or he's got to tell him he's got to play with four. Going to be a blocking foul inside on Lewis. They'll get Hughes out of the ball game here. They've had Oosterbond sitting in front of the official scorer waiting for a dead ball situation. And Hughes sits down with, well, sits down with four, rather. Really. I normally always address someone by their first name, except for Frieder. Every time he sees me, it's, hey, Vital, hey, Vital, <laughs> and I picked it up from him. 10-point <laughs> ball game, and that's Kramer into the ball game. He's an aggressive player. He's made out of a mold of Mark Lozier, who used to play at Michigan, the Bodner brothers. And the Cats wants the ball. I figured it'd start going down inside. Good defensive play and give it help. Jobert, nice job, and gets it out to Oosterbahn. Here's another try for a steal. Jobert wants this game in his hands. Throws it away that time. But Michigan gets it back, and now they'll try to set it up. Jones really hustles and scraps number 30. Rice, basket will not count. Foul is before the bucket. This guy really works the sideline. I mean, he is an intense competitor. You talk about intensity, you have to talk Bob Knights. You've got to talk about Judd Heathcote, Gary Williams. I mean, these guys really are intense on that sideline. Foul was on McCants, his third non-shooting foul. Jobert leans into one and got it. Jobert moving well without the basketball. Doesn't have good quickness, but really knows how to get free. Jobert with 16. The lead is down to eight. Mitchell working away from the basket. Kramer knocked it out of bounds. At halftime, had a chance to see Fred Akers, the new Purdue football coach, used to be at Texas. Uh, nice to see him up here. He is uh, he is a class act, and Purdue has an excellent football coach. And he's a winner. He had a tough year down at Texas. I don't know. They made, a, I think, a poor mistake letting Akers go, and he's a great addition. To this Stevens gets the roll and draws the foul. Everett Stevens with the strong penetration as they love it out here in Purdue. And this is a great environment for basketball. These fans really get after it. There's the penetration. He has long arms, which makes him a lot bigger than his 6'3". There he is with the great concentration. Look at him concentrate and watch it drop down. Foul on Oosterbahn, his second as the lead goes back to 10. Kramer comes out of the ball game. Gene Cady said the guy that got him involved in basketball and his love for the game, though he was a football player, like Bob Wade was a football player, mm -hmm. also the Maryland coach, and he said uh, the reason he got Bob was because of a guy by the name of Tex Winter, outstanding coach at Kansas State, as we got a walking violation. Osterbein got the rebound, but he shuffled the feet inside under defensive pressure. He didn't like the call. 
Grant, as you saw, back into the ball game with 11 points. He's big, Ustaban. Look at that body and size. Listed at 240. That looks uh, a little optimistic. Mitchell. Where have you been, Todd Mitchell? He's been kind of quiet. This guy's got star ability, but he's been a little bit quiet here early in the game. At nine right now, and it's a 12-point lead. Thompson, tough pass. He just whipped that baby inside and out of bounds off of Grant. Michigan seems to score a lot better when they score off a turnover, off a fast break situation than they do out of their half-court execution. Here's Stevens, little cat and mouse with Grant. Yeah, the rap on Everett Stevens last year was he played out of control. He was wild, and they were really concerned whether he could make the adjustment to the point guard. Lewis into the lane. Lewis has 24 points, and it's a 14-point lead. And Bill Frieder has seen enough. And his mama's going wild. His mother's sitting in front of me. Mrs. Lewis is having a real wild time watching the Troy Lewis show. He's just matched his season's high of 24. We've got a timeout. It's Purdue 53, Michigan 39. You earth people keep stars in a bowl? Campbell's chicken and star soup. Why do you put stars where you speak? That's the way we eat, mouth. This is the way we eat. Huh? Campbell's tastes good. <laughs> Kids may be different, but Campbell's knows what they love. That's why we have six delicious soups for kids. If you eat where you speak, do you drink where you listen? Campbell's soup is good food. <laughs> Katie on the sideline with a 14-point lead over Michigan. You want to get Gene Katie a little excited, just ask him why they don't play Notre Dame. Oh, no, no call right there. Good call by the official. Really, it's... Grant with a great pass into Rice. Oh, I like Glenn Rice. He's so quick. He's got the good touch. Not having a big night tonight, but what a load of ability he has. He's got nine, cuts the lead to 12. Gene Katie said that Digger Phelps told him, he said, there aren't any roads from South Bend, Indiana, to West <laughs> Lafayette. <laughs> Lewis is fouled by Thompson. I bet Digger wouldn't build him one either. Just uh, I, I'll tell you, you know, I said, why not play on a neutral? He said, I'll play him anywhere. I want to play the fighting Irish in order today. He says, please tell Digger to play us. <laughs> Thompson picked up his uh, third personal foul, and Lewis will go back to the line where he's been seven out of eight tonight. Saw his mother at halftime. She was exchanging pleasantries with everyone. She's on cloud nine. Troy Lewis's mom watching him perform here in all-American fashion. I mean, he's really playing like a superstar tonight. This is his season high with 25 points. Career high, 31 against Southern Illinois. And they're not four shots as he comes up short on a free throw. They're really good shots within their offense. Sure are. 54-41. Purdue put a little distance There's between. a double up. Oh, he stepped on a line. I thought he stepped on a line and he missed it. Jump shot by Thompson. Thompson with his first two points. He's got to shoot the ball a little bit more. Thompson is a good shooter. Open in the middle, McCants. Making a lot of motion on offense. There's the high low entry. Got away from Griffin, and Griffin committed the foul. That's a really tough play to defend. 
Mike getting position inside when they reverse the ball. See you try and defend him now. They dump it inside. Now watch. He'll kick it back out. Now watch him try to spin for position. Now watch him. There he is with the big body. See how he seals the defensive player off? He gets in between the defensive player and the ball, and it's very difficult to defend. Tough job for Griffin at 6'7", 215. Yeah, he doesn't have the body to get around the big fellow. McCants wants the ball. They ought to look down inside to the horse. Mitchell will take a 14-footer. Won't go. Jobert with a rebound, and here come the Wolverines. Uh, he's hot talking a little bit too much, yeah. putting a little mustard on a ball between the legs. Thompson against Lewis. Tough shot. Won't go. Follow. Won't go. Grant had a perfect opportunity to lay it in inside. Couldn't do it, but Griffin kept it alive. Michigan's certainly going to be a lot tougher next year when they add Ramil Robinson. What a strong body and great driver he is, Mike. And Terry Mills, the 6'9 superstar from out of Romulus, Michigan. Both did well their first semester academically. Last foul was on Jones, his first. And there's Rice with another jumper. Rice gets hot. Michigan can get back in it. They're only down by nine. He's a big-time performer. He can really play that baseline. He's so smooth and a great jumper. Jones inside, had it slapped away. Shouldn't have put it to the floor, Mike. Made a mistake by dropping it to the deck. Boy, Jobert really wants the ball. Slapping his hands for it, and Thompson gave it up. This is Grant. Stevens is really containing Grant from really getting off with a big 25, 30-point night. Here's a re another reach-in foul on Kip Jones. Jones, a key player, came out of high school as an outstanding recruit. They called him Indiana Jones, a very active player, playing on a bad ankle. Really, they didn't expect any minutes at all out of Kip Jones here tonight. Tony Jones, number 25, will replace him. He's going to be a pilot, majoring in aviation technology, Tony Jones. We have need to be a one-person cockpit. Oh, this kid can shoot the ball. What That's a smooth right. release. Glenn Rice with a... Rainbow J from Flint, Michigan. He has 13 now and getting Michigan back in it. They're down by seven at 54-47. Oh. Grant's done a pretty good job on Stevens, too. Yeah, he's done a good job. Well, he's a tremendous defensive player. They call him the general. Lewis, three-pointer. Holy cow, what a night he's having. When in doubt, get it over to number 23. It's the TL show, Troy Lewis. 28 points for Lewis to lead back to 10. He's a PT peer, a fine time performer. Jobert had it blocked in his face, got it back, puts it up again, and made it this time. Jobert says, I have guts, baby. I've been delivering this deuce at St. <laughs> Cecilia in Detroit. You can block them all you want, but I'm taking it back in your face. Jobert with 18. Grant wants the... I mean, the, they, McCants wants the ball so badly when he gets down low, but his people don't look inside. Everett and Jones working in the backcourt along with Lewis, really a three-guard offense. This is Lewis looking for 30, and he's got it. I can't believe that went down and found the net. He was behind the basket. He can take it out in the parking lot and throw it through right now. Yeah, he's on fire. 59-49, the sixth-ranked Boilermakers looking for their 10th win against a single loss. Thompson missed badly on that one. And we've got a foul against Purdue inside, and Jobert is hurt. He's holding the knee. He's really such a charismatic kid, Antoine. I've had the opportunity to talk to him a number of times, and I just feel so bad that he had so much publicity and so many people expected so many big things. They thought he was the coming of Magic Johnson and would mm -hmm. take Michigan to the national championship. The top of your screen, let's take a look right there. There's the block out. They really blocking him out. They tangle oh, yeah. up, throw him to the deck, twist his leg. And there he is, looks like he got his leg twisted. I'll tell you one thing, Purdue was working yesterday on blocking out, and Gene Cady was reminding his team, if you want to win big in this league, you got to block out. I'm really not sure what the fans are booing about. I think they're saying they've got to put somebody else in the ball game. They can't just uh, sit here and wait forever, and that's true. And they'll get uh, Hughes back in the ball game. He has four fouls coming back in yeah. the game right now. And 13-26 to go, and Jobert 
is still working on that right knee. Trying to see if he has any flexibility in that knee. Doesn't look like he's in much pain right now, but I don't know about his mobility. Oh, he's walking fine. He ought to be back in there very quickly, and certainly they're going to need him. They took him out so they can get charged with a timeout. Right. Crowd wanted to walk there. Ball tipped away, but Grant got it back and put it in. That was the easiest given to go by Gary Grant right there. Got the ball on a loose ball. Grant, who averages 20, Count it. 13, and lost it. Unbelievable. He's having a Rick Mountain night. One night here back in 1970, Rick Mountain lit it up for 61 big ones. And if they had the three point play, they charted <laughs> yeah. it. He would have had 74 against Iowa. And Freddie Brown and company. Uh, he may not get to that point tonight, but he's got 32, a career high. And Grant quiets the crowd again with a tough running one hander. Gary Grant with the running one hander shows good rotation. He's an NBA first rounder, Mike. There's no doubt in my mind with his quickness, defensive ability. And the fast tempo of the NBA game will be an outstanding guard. There goes the horse. Chance. Now, as well as Purdue is playing, they're still only up by 10. Basketball efficiency starts in the middle. You have to have a post player if you're going to go far in the NCAA tournament. They have it here at Purdue. With Joe Bear out of the ball game, Grant is taking it all on his back, and they'll lose the rebound out of bounds. And there is Joe Bear. They got to find a way to get Glenn Rice the ball. He was feeling it there, and they yeah. got away from him. They got to realize the Michigan players, when they have a player with a hot hand, you got to get him the ball. Also think guard Thompson has to make some shots from outside. Yeah, he's not even looking to shoot the ball, Mike. Lewis on the night, 11 out of 14 from the floor, 8 out of 10. Oh, what a pass to Stevens. Holy cow, what a pass to Stevens. That was a set play. Everett Stevens is a great jumper. In fact, he led the team in Block shot block last shot. year from the guard spot. And does this year. 34 block shots this year. He really works defensively, too. That's why I like him. 65-53. They got it to Rice. He missed the shortman. Got it back. Had it blocked. And here's going to be a foul on Kramer. Starting to get away from Michigan right yep. now. They got to bring Joubert on the floor. And he is coming in. Right now, they run a set play. Look at Lewis. He has great vision. He knows the play is called. He flips it over the top of the defense, and there it is to his running mate in the backcourt, Stevens, for the layup. We've got a timeout here in West Lafayette, Indiana at Purdue. 11.43 to go in the game. It's a 12-point game. If you're a businessman or woman with the brains, drive, and desire to run a growing company, Inc., the magazine for growing companies, invites you to call now for a free copy of its Guide to Small Business Success. Here's a special report packed with the kind of hard-nosed, how-to business savvy you find in every issue of Inc. That's I-N-C, period. And the Guide to Small Business Success is yours free just for subscribing to Inc. at the money-saving trial rate of $18 for one full year. Then each month, you'll profit from Inc.'s special brand of hands-on management advice, facts, news, and ideas that quickly get down to business, plus insights into the business news straight from the men and women who make it news. So call today for 12 monthly issues of Inc. and Inc.'s Guide to Small Business Success free. That's 800-445-4200. What's more, as a special bonus, you'll get this handsome Inc. soft briefcase free with your paid order. Inc. Magazine pays for the call. Toll free, 800-445-4200. 65-53, Purdue over Michigan. 11:43 left in the ballgame. Here's my all-Flint USA team. Bill Frieder was a coach in Flint, Michigan. Won a state championship. You got Rice. We got Terrence Green at the pole. Anthony Pendleton is sitting out at University of Southern Cal. Jeff Grayer, an outstanding forward at Iowa State. Roy Marble on the undefeated Iowa Hawkeyes and Darrell Johnson. And I'll tell you one thing. Per capita in Flint, Michigan, they produce more basketball players than any city, Mike. And that doesn't include years ago the late Terry Furlow, who played at Michigan sure. State. Also Marty Embry at the pole. Barry mm -hmm. Stevens at Iowa State, the McGee sisters who played at the University of Southern Cal and they're great teams. Just a great city for basketball. Tough to get a spot on the playground during the summer, right? I know. Move over to Buick Open, the great golf tournament. That's USA Basketball. Mitchell. Stevens in three-point range thought about it, decided against it. Oh, what a nice pass. Great pass to the interior. 
excellent at the angle, what I call the 45 degree angle on the entry down into McCants for the layup. McCants now has 16. Remember, all the Purdue starters came into this game averaging in double figures. Rice moves outside, misses the shot. It's a 14 point lead. Here's Tony Jones. Oh, Tony Jones, tremendous quickness. He was a record holder in the 400 meters relay in high school, has blinding speed. They said he could have gotten his college scholarship in track, football, or basketball. He chose basketball. Gene Kennedy said he's the best all-around young athlete he's ever had here. Jobert coming back in after that uh, twisted knee, hits a jumper, and Antoine Jobert has 20. He gives him stability. He gives him experience. He's been through it. You know, for all the criticism he's received, while he's played at Michigan, Michigan's been 88 and 22 in his bad. four years. Purdue has hit his last seven. Stevens going for eight. They finally miss fire. And here comes Grant. Oh, it's a little shake and bake. Look at a little shake and bake. He missed the layup, but what a good move. They kept it alive, and Mark Hughes gets the follow. 69-57. Sometimes you shake and bake a little too much. That's one of the moves he demonstrated out in Canton, Ohio. Went to the same high school that produced one of the great Michigan players, Phil Hubbard, who I had the pleasure to coach. Just a real tough, tenacious player. Nice drive. The basket will count. And a blocking foul on top of it, and Lewis has 34. Excellent call by the official, Mike. The defensive player did not rotate over to close off the driving lane quick enough. Now watch Lewis. He goes into a one-on-one -on -one move. He takes the baseline. Look, at he gets help from Stevens with a little screen. We can't see it here, but the defensive player did not rotate over quick enough. Here comes the defensive player. See, he's a half step. Both feet are not planted. He's not facing the offensive player. Excellent call by the official. Fouls on Griffin. Oosterbahn will come back into the ball game. And Mark Hughes, who's been playing with four fouls, will have to go out. Lewis now uh, adding to his career high total every time he scores. And they need almost every one of them right now because Michigan was playing them tough, especially in the first half. And if they didn't have the big night out of Lewis, things would have been a little different. They're getting away now, up 15. Biggest lead of the night. With 9.43 to left, Gilbert. Defense made him fire up an air ball and a good rebound of Mitchell. Not a good shot by Antoine Joubert. Poor judgment. Stevens ahead of the pack. Oh, the place would have exploded if he made that one. This place must be a madhouse when the Hoosiers come in here. Two on one. Let's see the play right now. Give it to. Oh, that's the way you run it. Pretty pass. It's a blocking foul. Grant tried to get back, but they ran that two-on-one very well, Dick. They ran it like a clinic. You want to stay a little bit wider than the lane to force, put defensive pressure on Grant. See, they make it very difficult for Grant to play both of them. They spread out, they keep wide, they keep about 12 to 14 feet wide to make it very difficult for the one player to play both. That was close, though. He uh, very quick on defense. Well, he's a very quick player defensively. He's had a bad NCAA tournament uh, his freshman year and a bad NCAA NCAA tournament is second year, and that's what people seem to remember. Your last game, sure. Free throw by Lewis or Stevens, excuse me. Thompson coming back in. You know, you talk about having it tough. Purdue had to go down to Baton Rouge and beat LSU on their own home floor. Mm -hmm. LSU won in overtime down at uh, Baton Rouge. Then the year before, they had to play Memphis State in the NCAA at Memphis State. Two rather tough places to go. Well, it's tough to beat anybody on their home court, and especially in NCAA tournament time. I think that is personally a no-no to put a team on their home floor. 73-57, time not yet a factor, just a little bit over nine minutes to left. Rice goes up, had the ball knocked out of his hands. Good defense by Mitchell. They said he got all ball. Michigan's got to start to look a little bit more for the three-point play. Yeah. Now, Guard Thompson shot seven in a row in one game, and they're not even looking for it. Now, Stevens coming out of the ball game, limping a little bit on the right leg. He's the one irreplaceable part to this team. He runs the offense. He plays good defensive basketball. Oh, what a block. Joe Bear off balance, won't go. Rice trying to bring it back outside. He's the only legitimate rebound that they have. Bear misses again, and we've got a foul inside, and this one's going to be on Mike Griffin. It's going to start to get away, Mike. I yeah. can see it happening now. It's starting to get really sloppy. Michigan forcing shots offensively, and it looks like right now Purdue can get away into the 20s. 
and that's a pretty good comfort zone if you can get it up to that. Anything over nine, in fact, and you can breathe a little bit easier. Bill Feeder said, I am hitting the streets to find me some front court <laughs> players that can rebound because next year he adds a finesse player. Terry Mills is not a power player. He's a tremendous finesse player. And Ramil Robinson, where do you see him, Mike? You're going to love him. Good. Come out of oh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I had him in a McDonald's All-American game. Mitchell now with 10 points, averages 16-7. Jubair going out of the game, and so is Griffin Grant coming back in. Jubair played in a Dapper Dan, a prestigious game put on by Sonny Vaccaro and his people, and most of these kids played in the McDonald's and the, and the Dapper Dan mm -hmm. All-Star games because these are really the queen of the crop. 75-57, the lead mounts to 18 with 8.44 left. Tried to get it inside to Rice. Added out of bounds by Mitchell. Purdue does a good job defensively playing the angles and really shutting off and containing on the entries. They really make it tough for you to get a good shot. Hey, I'd love to see Indiana and Purdue. Can you imagine Knight versus Katie, what the electricity must be in Bloomington and in here? That'll be quite a ball game. I'm going to buy a ticket for that, Mike. Nah, you'll get somebody to give you one. No, I'm going to pay for one. <laughs> Every time I say something positive about Bob Knight, these Purdue people, they get all over my case. I said, why do you say so many good things about him? I said, check his record. He's a winner. They don't want to hear it. There's a lot of good things to say about him. And we may have had a walk, and we did. It's been a tough night for guard Thompson. Stevens will check back into Purdue's lineup. And they'll take Tim Fisher, the senior co-captain, out. Stevens took the job over. Matt Gaddis graduated, and he got the job this year and has really established himself. As we look at field goal percentage by the half, 81% for Purdue. How are you going to beat a club when they're shooting 81%? Kramer out there trying to give it uh, everything he can on defense and gets a five-second call out of it. He did. He was sending them east to west really and he made him dribble the ball look at the intensity look at his face right now he's up big and look at him look can you imagine a one-point game against bob knight you would think he's down about 20. gene you're leading by 18 points with 809 to go but i guess you can't relax and i'm sure you never relaxed when you were coaching i was calm cool you ask anybody mike i was a <laughs> i was really a picture of great de decorum on a bench i never got excited i was easy going <laughs> i was the wildest <laughs> zaniest maniac in the history of basketball i figured if you were ever going to pull my leg there was a chance here's the steal Mitchell foul on the way in and made it anyhow it's blowout city right now here in West Lafayette 14,000 plus love and here comes Todd Mitchell his sister Charlene's jumping with joy in the newsroom at channel two she watches her big brother Todd deliver the basketball Purdue has run off eight straight points. They now lead by 20. And all Bill Frieder can do is bring his team to the bench and try to get him to circle the wagons for the last 755. It's Purdue leading by 20 at home. Volvo 760, the car for people whose means have changed, but whose values haven't. holding tryouts for another MetLife prompt payments quarter. See, MetLife believes it's really important to pay insurance claims promptly, no matter what this one. That one is for really big checks. Get Met, it pays. Purdue starting to run away with it. They're now up by 20 with 7.55 left to go in the ball game. Uh, earlier, we had an interesting quote from uh, uh, Bill Frieder. 
it's amazing the job that Gene Cady has done considering Notre Dame and Indiana are close by sure. and he hasn't recruited the All-American High School player out of Indiana. Cady is a big winner. Ooh, now, I don't know. Well, what is that What exciting? can we read between the lines from that one, Coach? Well, I don't know. I don't think the guy down in South Bend, Indiana or the guy on Bloomington is going to like that quote. There's like little implications there. But Frieda was in rare form uh, this afternoon in the car. I was driving over with uh, Gene Cady and Bill Frieda and he had them all flowing today and he said, yeah, he was teasing and Katie said, all you guys, have your fun. Wait, next year we're going to be rocking and rolling again in Ann Arbor. He's a competitor. Bill Feeder's a winner. He's a workaholic. I've never met a man in my life. You talk about a workaholic. I was labeled as a guy that was a fanatic in terms of recruiting and coaching, but this guy had me beat Mikey. He, he right? just would be in every gymnasium. He's a gym rat. And his wife, Jan, is a very competitive woman. She runs and she does all kinds of skiing and competitively and is, is just an outstanding athlete in her own right. The lead is now 21 points with 7.49 left to go in the ballgame. Michigan is going to have to go the three-point route in a hurry, I think. I think this proves, once again, as they double up on a ball and they throw it over the top of the defense. It's a you can't win at this level, Mike, without an inside game, and that's basically what it's really been down to. Mm -hmm. Rice got the follow shot that time. As effective as Troy Lewis has been, and he's been brilliant, he's had some help inside from Mitchell and also McCants. Rice has done the job offensively in the second half, and he hasn't gotten a lot of help. They don't look for Glenn Rice enough. He's really treated as a fourth option rather than really a primary option in their offense. Mitchell kept it alive in there, but Oosterbond got the rebound for Michigan. We'll be back here for a great game in about two weeks from tonight when Iowa's Hawkeyes come in oh, here. You could, could come in here undefeated and maybe even number one in the country if Nevada Vegas was to stumble. Joe Bear got his own rebound. Kramer three-pointer short. Joe Bear gets it again and puts it in. Joe Bear just playing his heart out. He is playing hard. He's playing, giving 100% right now. He's been doing it the entire night. Doesn't have great jumping ability. Doesn't have good lateral quickness. But he's getting the most out of his body. And he's got 22 points. Tony Jones, the freshman. Here's where you got to start to develop some backup players. you got to have people in this league that can come off the bench to help. Mitchell misses the shot. Guess who? Basket over rule. We got a foul before. Troy Lewis now getting inside for rebound. Watch Lewis now moving without the ball. He goes outside, now he runs a backdoor cut. He's got good inside position right here. Kramer lets him get inside. Poor job by Kramer. Has no awareness of where Lewis is on the play. And once you turn your head at this level, <laughs> it's over. Trouble. You can do that at Quincy, Illinois in high school, but you're not going <laughs> to do it here in a big time level. But he'll learn. Troy Lewis, what a night. He'll get another. That's the most points by a Purdue player now in uh, nine years. As Lionel Richie would say, all night long. All night long. Get me the ball, says Troy Lewis. Joe Barry Carroll did it in 79. Had a ton. It's a 19-point lead again with 6.15 left to go in the game. They're running that follow series, and every time Michigan runs a follow series, they double up on the ball because two people are together. Grant forces one up and got it. Grant has 17. Chicago Bulls love Gary Grant. They've been out evaluating him, and I know they really would love to hook him up back there with Michael Jordan. Oh! Good pass inside. Layup by McCants won't go, but they've got another foul inside. They're just pounding it in now, and Griffin picks up the person. That's where you win games. I'm sure Chicago would deny that, but I hear from inside people, they really like Gary Grant. They were up to see him up in uh, the game against Illinois where he didn't play really well, but they've seen enough of him. You like this backcourt? The backcourt for Purdue? I love right. the backcourt for Purdue. I think Stevens and Lewis, to me, I think by next season, they could be the best backcourt in the country. I really, with Kenny Smith moving out down to North Carolina, they're getting a right. tremendous freshman in by the name of King Rice. But uh, a great I great name, isn't it? Oh, King Rice. They're <laughs> going to love him down at Chapel Hill. And also a kid coming out of, hey, he broke the hearts. I mean, he broke the hearts of the Purdue coaching staff. Ricky Fox from out of Warsaw, Indiana, is going to be playing for Dean Smith down at Chapel Hill. 
Dean tends to get a few well, good ones, doesn't he? The Dean Dome, he's got that great office that's unbelievable. He pushes those buttons and they bring down highlight films of Michael Jordan, James Worthy, and the kid looks there and all wants says, wow, I can wear that blue and white? I'm sure you had an office like that in Detroit. <laughs> they treated me great at Detroit. Tipped out of bounds. It's still Michigan's ball with 544 left. This is cool filling time right about now, yes. isn't it, Mike, yes, in the business? Is. I didn't know. You know, I'm a jock coming out of the locker room. They tell me this is filling time. That's Rice back in the ball game as Mike Griffin sits down. And I think Michigan's got to start uh, firing some three-pointers. Yeah, they've got to have an awareness of where that three-point line is. They're jamming it in now. Grant tried to get it up, but he's in the lane for three seconds. They turn it over. They struggle offensively in their five-on-five -five game. We'll have Michigan again against Indiana next Monday. And at Ann Arbor, they'll be a tougher team. They really will be. Sure. Bob Knight knows up in Ann Arbor, Michigan is a, a different basketball team. Turnovers are even in this ball game. surprisingly, 12 each. Seems like Michigan has more. Tough way to start the Big Ten, play on the road at Illinois and at Purdue. Almost turned it over there. Lee back in the ball game with those four personal fouls, and there's Mitchell again. That's where he's got to go. He's got to stop playing on the outside and take that big body and explode on that baseline and use his strength on the inside. The lead is back to 20. Here's Thompson, three pointer. These are the ones they got to shoot and they got to make them. He hit seven in a row in one yeah. game. Anytime a kid can hit seven in a row out there, you know he's a pretty good shooter, but he didn't even think about that tonight. On the season, he shoots 46.5% from three point range. Grant shoots 51%. I wouldn't take another two-point shot the rest of the game. Yeah, and I promise tonight not to say anything about moving that line back a little further. Oh, yeah. Shot blocked inside as Mitchell tried to score. Here comes Michigan. Oh, not a good And pass. they throw it away. Grant got it back. Brown little... wanted a foul, and yeah. Grant hits the jumper inside the line. He should have definitely had a foul. He pushed him off. Look at Katie. He's going to fight and scrap and claw the entire night. His team will always come to play. You will never see a Bob Knight team, a Gene Cady team, a Judd Heathcote team ever not come to play. Well, last call really uh, lit up Coach Cady, didn't it? Oh, he's been lit up the entire night. He's been <laughs> lit up since 10 this morning. McCants. And we've got the foul inside as McCants had excellent position. I had a great education yesterday when Gene invited me to the coaching staff meeting and he allows his coaches all to have a little word as we watch Ustabom coming over with a shot block there he is uses the left hand gets the good rejection says thou shalt not enter my lane but I was so impressed at his staff meeting that he allowed all his young coaches to all be able to give a comment here or there and then finally he says hey I'm the boss and I'm going to do it this way we're going to do it now he really listens to all his young coaches Kevin Stallings and Bruce Weber and coach Wood and I thought it was very impressive and then they have their game plan what they have to work on they weren't happy with blocking out they weren't happy with ball movement and they went in the gym for two and a half hours and they they really worked on those parts mm -hmm. of the game. Did you let your assistant coaches do anything except drive you to and from the gym? <laughs> no, my, I had excellent <laughs> assistants. Uh, David Gaines now at San Diego State, Jimmy Boyce I had at one time, a Mike Drunker, an outstanding young coach now at San Diego State. Hey, McCants missed both of those. This could get reasonably close. Oh! Shot by Rice won't go. They can't keep it alive. And here come the Boilermakers. Mitchell ahead of the pack. Oh, what a nice bounce pass. pass. And he missed it. Here comes Grant back the other way. It's a little showtime right now. Oh, nice head fake. Oh, Oosterbahn dumps it back outside, and uh, Thompson puts it in. Oosterbahn can't pass up those, can he? He's got to take that strong to the basket. When, you're his, when you got that kind of size, Thompson all of a sudden finding the, the range. It was 20. Now it's 13. Still time left, 331. And Gene Cady is standing outside of that coach's box, and he is not happy with the way his club is playing right now. Lee, who has spent most of the game with the second, uh, with most of the second half, I'm trying to say, with four personals. Guarded by Jobert, who slapped at him. Purdue working on the clock right now. Shot clock is down to 11. Mitchell. Would have been three. Jobert kept it alive. Knocked out of bounds. Out to Michigan. They can cut it to 10 with a three-point shot. It's getting very interesting again with 2.59 to go in the ballgame. It's Purdue 83, Michigan 70. 
Stay with us after the ball game as Chris Berman and Larry Burnett will be in the Sports Center and update you on all the ball games across the country. Highlights, scores, you name it. Everything about college basketball that you wanted to know. And they'll even tell you how this one turned out with Purdue leading Michigan 83 to 70. But we have 259 to go and Michigan, uh, there's no quitting the Wolverines. I'll tell you one thing, when Chris Berman starts letting it loose about how Troy Lewis was on fire. He'll have a few slam bam jam comments. He can really light it up in that studio. Georgetown against Villanova, Indiana against Michigan next Monday night. Not bad for a doubleheader on ESPN. Hope you'll be with us. Michigan going for can cut the lead 10 or 11 points right now. They need the bucket. They're trying to go inside, outside, enter the ball inside. Guard Thompson's got a spot up on that three-point line. They don't have time to be this choosy about a shot. Not a good shot to get out of your no. offense, Mike. You're down 13 late in the game. They do not have enough ball movement and space relationship from each other. You can give a lot of help against them right now. I'm sure Gene Cady wants his team to work on the clock more than anything else right now, but they try to get it down into scoring territory. Got a an offensive foul. He can call a technical on him also. He flipped that ball up into the crowd. Not a heady play by Todd Mitchell. He's lucky to get away, not getting slapped with the tee. And this is the best thing that can happen to Michigan is to be fouled because they can score with the clock standing still at 218. And then they can jump into some kind of full court pressure, sure. force a turnover. And it's Rice going to the free throw line. He disappears for too many minutes of the game. Glenn Rice, before he's recognized as being an outstanding player, he has to be involved for more minutes on the floor. He has just too much talent. Hughes is back in, who's worked with four fouls most of the second half. These are big shots. Oh, excuse me. This is. Uh, that was Glenn put Rice. Up, yeah, we put up Rice. the. Uh, it was Rice at the line. Put up the wrong graphic there for you, but it was Rice, and he misses the front end of a big, big one and one. Michigan's going to try to trap right here. There's Thompson. Somebody's got to post Back up. court. Yeah. He went up for and back. No one, no one on Purdue recognized the trap coming, and no one came back to the ball. Gene, a little frustrated and aggravated. Now watch him. He goes across the 10-second line. There he is. He crosses, and now he's going to come back with that foot. Now he comes back. He's up and over. Yeah, now the ball's over. Exactly. Well, as I re as I remember, both feet and the ball have to be in have front to, court. Have to both be in the front court. Yep. They and both do. And after he did that, I didn't see him cross back. No, he didn't cross back there. I was a little deceiving. There's the three-pointer. Thompson's short on it. It was tough to see from that angle. Comes Lewis. We're down to a minute 45. It's a 13-point lead, and Purdue will try to play keep away. They got to get good ball movement right now. Trying to use some of that clock, reversing the ball. They don't need to shoot the basketball. They got to get they can just keep it for two possessions. They win. Hey. Lee inside to McCants. He leans into one and got it. When in doubt, you got to go down into McCants. That Clydesdale is really improved down in the boxes. 17 for McCants. Got a Clydesdale like McCants, and you add a thoroughbred like Lewis. Thompson, three pointer. And here's a foul by Bear, and they're going to call this two shots that's a good because call. he reached in and really took a hack at it. Yeah, that's definitely the rule says you must directly go after the ball for it to be a one on one. He was just trying to stop the clock. Rita getting a little frustrated right now. Watch Joubert now. 
He's just trying to stop the clock. He just grabs him, hooks him. Uh, you can't reach around somebody. That's an intentional foul. Definitely trying to stop you, the clock. You at least have to make it look like you're trying to commit a one and one. Exactly. Uh, Bill Frieder is really giving it to one of the officials. Well, he's setting it up for a future game. He's trying to work the officials now. He's frustrated. Free throw is good. Gene Cady said that his parents don't have cable down in Sacramento, <laughs> California. They got to go out to try to find some TV down you had some a great pizza. Line to him, well, too. I told him at the lunch, and I said, with all the money you're making here at Purdue, you should buy a dish. <laughs> 87-73, cross-court pass intended for Thompson, knocked out of bounds with one minute exactly left. Our producer's still working in my ear, trying to get me to talk about low post play. John Wildhack really knowing his hoops, getting all over my case in here. Talk about the post plays there. Thompson tries to drive, can't get it. Grant hustling inside, follows. Little garbage time right now. Gary Grant hustling, trying to get the timeout. A little bit too late getting the timeout after a... Purdue must foul, and Thompson does the right thing. He reaches in and gets the one and one. Who do you like in the Big Ten, by the way? I mean, you got four teams to set it up. Four teams in the Associated Press top 12, and I mean, they're going to beat each other up in this league. That's one of the, the, the problems of playing in a league. You got four great teams. You're going to pound on each other for a while, but who's going to win it? I think we got three really outstanding teams in Purdue, Indiana, and Iowa. And we got the fourth team that's really from anywhere from 15 to, you know, top 20 team in Illinois. But the other three are legit top 10s. I think if Dean Garrett gives them solid play in the middle, stop, stop. looking at there's the timeout. If they get solid play in the middle out of Dean Garrett, something that they haven't had consistently from Garrett, I think the slight edge has got to go to Indiana also because of some bench play. I think Purdue has the premier, I mean the best. You can talk North Carolina, Nevada, Vegas. I think they have the best starting five, but I think it ends there. Their bench has not proven yet that they have really been able to contribute in a big situation. You mentioned Nevada, Las Vegas. I think we may be facing a situation uh, like they had in football a couple of years ago when Brigham Young really didn't play a whole lot of quality the opposition and was number one in football. What about Nevada, Las Vegas? They're going to go all year. Uh, going to be going to be number one. I really think as we look at St. John's, going to play Georgetown. I'll be down there for that game, Mike. And I know we were excited about there, Mike. You and I working at because John Thompson and Luke Carnesecca is always a classic matchup. Watching those two hook up. But getting back to your question about Nevada, Vegas, I really believe they've met every challenge. They beat the heck out of Navy. I mean, blow them away. Okay, it's at home. And they Robin played was foul trouble. They played Temple. Temple is a solid basketball yes, team. They beat Temple. They beat Western Kentucky. They beat Oklahoma. They beat Arizona. They go on a road and win at Memphis State. Jerry Tarkanian's club has played a very challenging early schedule. I think it'll get easy now in the PCAA, and there are only two potential losses the way I see it would be Auburn, at Auburn, and also uh, Oklahoma, at Oklahoma. Even though Oklahoma, Billy Tubbs, I wonder if he got my Christmas gift. I sent him a nice gift, a what? seminar on how to play defense from Bob Knight, <laughs> telling him to get his kids down there to play on the defensive end because they got great offensive firepower. And I like Billy I'm Tubbs. Not, I'm not knocking Nevada Las Vegas as a team. I'm just saying they oh, don't, yeah, sure. they don't play the, the truth. No, they don't play the schedule that you'd play in the Big Ten or the ACC. Or you don't, you don't. And the PCAA is not that bad a league. It's just that they don't have that much publicity, and they're not real strong from top to bottom. Now, all you people in Vegas, when you write your letters, write them care of Michael. Patrick no, ESPN, no. not Dick Vitale. <laughs> you want to talk about schedules. Take a look at what Purdue and Michigan have. Now, Purdue gets a couple of uh, games on the road before coming home to play Minnesota. And then it starts on January 19th, really back to back against Iowa and Illinois. And now Michigan, look what they have to do. At least they have them at home, Ohio State, Indiana, and Michigan State. Ohio State with Hobson really could be a, a real threat. Yeah. Curtis Wilson was brilliant yesterday for uh, Ohio State coming back against Indiana. And Gary Williams, you know, is going to have them playing and coach. hustling. And scrub. Yeah, he can coach. Yeah. And so could Tom Davis coach up at Iowa. Lewis has been incredible tonight. 12 out of 15 in the field goal department. 12 out of 14 free throws. He's been awesome. Yeah, he's really put on a performance here today. He's just taken over from the opening uh, gun from wire to wire. He's been the star. 
He's got 39 points, and Purdue leads by 12 with 26 seconds to go. They'll take him out, and he'll get a standing O. SRO, standing room only, and they're all rocking and rolling. And there he is, shaking all the hands. Look at the tally sheet now, 39, five assists, eight rebounds, and he'll sell some popcorn also. Grant with a jumper, Purdue with a rebound, and we're down to 18 seconds. The Boilermakers are going to go 10 and 1, 2 and 0 in the Big Ten. Michigan will lose its second straight in conference play and overall drop to 8 and 5. And they'll just hold it. We're down to one second. It's over. Purdue has beaten Michigan 89 to 77. The Boilermakers are tough, Dick. Difference inside. Their inside attack is just too strong for Michigan. We talked about it on the top of the show. And it was all Troy Lewis. He was absolutely scintillating here tonight. Gene Cady walking off the court here as his club wins it by 12. For Dick Vitale, this is Mike Patrick saying so long from West Lafayette. Let's go to Bob Lee. Thank you, Mike. So Purdue, the new number 16 with a new poll out today with a 12-point win over Michigan as we conclude our big...